This is Vincent Price. We bring you a story as close to you as the headlines of tomorrow's newspapers. I'll tell you for the last time, Wendell Whitney is the man. Now, believe me. We are talking about the Supreme Court, not a job in the post office. He's a candidate, that's all. One of a dozen. That's right. right. That's that's right. right. Now, hold on. Now, what are you, what are you oh. talking about? Are you? The president wants him. Now, that's enough for me and you. Yes, but what do we really know about this man? Very little, very little indeed. The question is, can he stand up under the scrutiny of the opposition, fellas? All the Eastern newspapers are topping Frank Hammond. Hammond? <laughs> He's a senile idiot. If we don't get a younger man into the court, we might as well kiss off all the Western liberal vote the next time around. Now, Lewis here knows everything there is to know about Wendell Whitney. Speak up, Lewis. Tell him. He was the top lawyer in his state. And he's been an outstanding judge of the appellate court for years. And above all, he's got a spotless reputation, and his loyalty to the party is unquestioned. He'll be a credit to every one of you who helped the president endorse him. You heard the man. The president endorses him. I endorse him. Now, what more do you want? When you hear this story titled Vicious Circle, you may say to yourself, oh, I know where Arch Obler got that idea, but you'll be wrong. Because I know for a fact that playwright Obler started to write this play over 20 years ago and finished it only a few days before this broadcast. So get yourself comfortable and in a moment hear the amazing story of Vicious Circle. Mutual Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week. Brought to you in Elliot Lewis's production of the Mutual Radio Theater. Our story, Vicious Circle by Arch Obler. Our stars, Fletcher Markle, Mary Jane Croft, and Vic Perrin. And now the first act of award-winning Arch Obler's play... Vicious Circle. My father once said it. Life is a vicious circle. It begins in the dark of eternity and ends there. And there is no escape. We are in a room in a famous hotel in our nation's capital. Judge Wendell Whitney, handsome face lined with tension... Paces impatiently up and down, up and down. He is waiting for a word. A magic word. Lewis, come in, come in. Well, what happened? Congratulations, Mr. Justice. <laughs> What's the matter? You're too shocked to speak. What? Happened just what we figured. Old Harkness held out a while, but Sprig and the others kept pounding away on your war record and your party loyalty and your reputation on the bench. And Harris made a speech about the Supreme Court needing young blood and all that. And just like that, Harkness said, okay. So that was that. Oh, they'll play a little more fiddly do before they officially tell you about it. But you're in, Wendell, and that's a fact. You better start working on your acceptance speech. That's wonderful. Hey, come on, what's the matter with you? Listen, I'll call for room service, get you a drink, or a dozen... No, no, you... No, I don't drink. Oh, sorry, I took one look at your face. It... Wendell, for God's sake, don't you realize what their endorsement means? Every survey, every poll indicates that the party is going to win this year. With the committee backing you up with your personal popularity, with Chief Justice Conbor, sick as he is, and the senility of the others... Inside of a year, you could become Chief Justice. Well, it's been a long time coming. Uh, you will answer it, Judge. They've come to bring you the happy tidings. No, please, you go. Okay. Okay. Oh, Wendell, there you are. Lewis has undoubtedly told you, but we're here to make it official. Congratulations, Mr. Justice. Yes, congratulations, Mr. Justice. Uh, thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. I, I'm deeply honored. Well, now, 
Uh, shall we adjourn someplace where we can have some friendly stimulants? <laughs> Senator Harris, I hope you'll forgive me, but I would like to go home at once and tell my wife. Oh, of course. Well, the very thing for you to do. There's plenty of time tomorrow for us all to get together. Uh, gentlemen, our candidate is going home to tell his wife. And having seen the beautiful Margaret, I'm sure we all understand. Oh, we should. Sure <laughs> Can I drive you home, Wendell? My car is outside. No, thank you. I brought my own. Uh, thank you again, gentlemen. I'll, I'll see you all tomorrow. Hey, we look forward to seeing you. Again, Doorman? Oh, yes, Judge. My car. Would you get it for me, please? Oh, it's at the curb, sir. I saw you crossing the lobby. <laughs> thank you. Uh, here you are. Oh, thank you, sir. Hey, Joe. Who's that? Oh, Judge Whitney. What's he running for? President? Oh, better than that. Supreme Court, I think. Now, that's a job. Nobody can fire you. Top money. Lucky guy. Oh, Margaret, Margaret, what will you say? I know you've been expecting it, but the reality... I'm going to slow down a bit. <laughs> Supreme Court candidate Dent Spenders on Washington Street... Got you talking to yourself, Judge? What? Who Who in the devil are... Better watch your driving, Judge. Don't worry about me. I'm quite comfortable in the back seat. Now, why did you have to stop? We can talk while you're driving. Get out of this car. How dare you... Oh. Well, well, Judge, so you remembered me. Hmm? It is you, isn't it? Yeah, I'm flattered. Yes, indeed. I mean, after ten years and forty pounds. Mind if I get in front with you, Wendy? We've got a little bit of talking to do. Okay, let's go. Drive. You drive good, don't you, Wendy? Sure. Everything you do is good. All right. What is it now? Say it. I've waited for you, Wendy. Now you wait for me. You want money again. All right. How much? Now, friend, did I tell you you could stop? All right. I've had enough... Tell me exactly what you want or get out. Now, Wendy, that ain't hospitable. Old-time friends like we are, you realize it's been ten years... Get out. Out! <laughs> you see, I'm not even moving, Wendy. I know you're just making a joke. That's the way it used to be. When was it? Ten years ago? You'd get all mad, and then you'd get smart, and we'd get along all right. That's the way it's going to be now, isn't it, friend? Or should I say, Mr. Justice? What are you talking about? Oh, Washington's like a big mouth. And I got big ears. I've been hearing exciting things. President's going to nominate you, ain't he, Wendy? And if he nominates you, that's it, isn't it? I mean, the way things are going. Justice of the Supreme Court. Wendy Whitney of Leeds, Wyoming. Who'd have thought it? Yeah. And who'd have thought you'd be district attorney and then governor? But then, I always was lucky, wasn't I, Wendy? How much? You're asking that question now at the right time, friend. A hundred thousand dollars. A hundred thousand? Does that surprise you, friend? It shouldn't... You're insane. I haven't got a fifth of that. Well, maybe you haven't, Wendy, but you'll get it. Oh, you filthy blackmailing scum. I... Still got your expensive temper, haven't you, Wendy? Looks like rain. Remember the rain, Wendell? Wet streets. Shut up. No, no. I shut up for ten years waiting. Just waiting. 
Now I'm talking. I knew you'd get there. Now you're there, so I can't shut up anymore. I'm giving you 48 hours to get the money. 48. And you'll get it, all right. A man who's going to be a Supreme Court judge has lots of friends with lots of anxious money. 20 years ago, $150 shut you up. Then it was 250 500 10 years ago, 1000 And now 100000 What next, Henry? Just tell me. I like you when you talk quiet that way, Wendy. I like it. Real sensible and businesslike. Answer me. What next? When you're, like they say, on the bench, I don't know. I'll have to figure it. It's always give and take with me, you know that. You and Margaret. Margaret. Mighty pretty girl she was, and is. Yeah. I found out where you lived. And I saw her come out of your hotel today. Real pretty woman, Margaret. You know something. I think I like her looks now even better than when she was plain little Margaret Byerly, the druggist kid. You want to know what else, Wendy? Well, I just got an idea. Back home, Margaret could never see me for dirt. Now, maybe if she changed that, she'll listen to you. Maybe be generous to an old friend. You filthy... That killed you. No, that killed you. Wait, no, killed you. God, you, you, <gasps> Henry, Henry, dear God. <laughs> Return to our play, Vicious Circle. Wendell Whitney, candidate, tells his wife of blackmail and murder. Hello? Yes? Julia! Yes! Oh, yes, I heard the newscast. Isn't it wonderful? No, Wendell isn't home yet. I'm sure he wanted to tell me himself, but the phone's been busy ever since the news flash. Excited? <laughs> I don't know if I'm standing or falling or dreaming. Oh, come on, don't you start that. You know, there's a small matter of the actual appointment and another little thing called getting past the Congress. Uh, Wendell? Yes? Oh, Julia, I have to hang up. Wendell just came in. Yeah. Yes, I'll tell him. Thanks for calling. Bye. Oh, Wendell. Wendell, oh, my God. Darling, it's wonderful, wonderful. Margaret. Now, that's an unenthusiastic hug. What is it? For your face, so somber. Oh, I know. No. The strain you've been under all these hours. Here, sit here. Rest. And then tell me all about it. Yes. If we were drinking people, this is the moment when I'd reach for the champagne. You know, I just realized something. If you became justice, and you will, you'll be the first teetotaler on the Supreme Court bench since Douglas. Uh, or was it Justice Holmes? Wendy, aren't you feeling well? Do you... <clears throat> do you remember when we got married? Well, what kind of question is that? You do remember, don't you? Thursday, that Thursday... Wendell, what is this? Of course I remember. Uh, (laughs) Oh, come now. Don't tell me after 20 years the wedding wasn't legal. Wasn't old Reverend Johnson really a qualified minister? Have we been living in sin like an old Tracy Hepburn movie? (laughs) Margaret, stop it. Stop laughing. What? That morning on the way to the wedding, you remember it was raining hard, I was late, driving fast. I was coming along the river road, and I didn't see. She was crossing the road, and I hit her. I got excited. I I didn't stop. 
Don't look at me as if I were a madman. I'm telling you the truth. Twenty years ago, on the morning of our wedding, I killed a woman. You what? I killed a woman. I, I can't believe I'm it. telling you, it's the truth. I, I hit her. I ran. Mary Foley, don't you remember Mary Foley? Old Mary Foley. Yes, yes, old Mary Foley. I was the hit-and-run driver. I killed her, and I ran away. But, uh, but why didn't you tell me then? And why tell me now, after all these years? Because the years have come back. I, I don't know what... That day, there was a witness. Oh. I didn't know then. I found out quickly enough. Who? Henry Benyon. Henry Benyon? So that's why... Yes. He... I was part of the blackmail. Calling him my friend, letting him visit us. Part of blackmail? He bled me for ten years. Then he disappeared. Until today. Oh, Wendell, why didn't you tell me? An accident twenty years ago. All these years... Why didn't you I didn't want to talk about it. I didn't want to think about it. These last years, I kept telling myself Henry had died, and that ended it. But it's not ended at all. He's back today. <laughs> of, of all days, today. Today. All these years, working, planning, making arrangements, compromising for what happened today. I'm not going to lose it, Margaret. I'm not going to lose it. All right. All right, Wendy. We'll pay him. Anything. It'll be all right. Wendy? What else? I killed him. What? His body's down in the trunk of the car. Oh, God. Yes. Your eyes closed? Thinking. Tell me, where, where are you going? Telephone? Who are you going to phone? The police. No. Give me the phone. Margaret, I've got to call No, them. I won't let you. Who did you kill? A man? No, a nothing. A, a piece of filth. You're going to be a justice of the Supreme Court of the United States. The Supreme Court. But I killed Mary Foley. Now him. Who was Mary Foley? Have you forgotten the town drunk? Your life for that? Wendy, lift your face. Look at me. You're going to be a justice of the Supreme Court. You're the best man for the job. The country needs you. You'll do a thousand things for, for, for millions of people that'll make up for those accidents in a million ways. You're not going to call the police. I told you. His body is in the trunk of my car. All right. We'll wait until it's dark, and then we'll get rid of it. <laughs> Turn to our story, Vicious Circle. Wendell Whitney, candidate for office in the United States, tries to dispose of the body of the blackmailer. Faster, Wendell. Let's go faster. No. Oh, you're right. We must drive along normally. Naturally. Are you sure you locked the trunk? Yes. Are you sure? I still think I should have left you at home. Must I say it again? You can't do this alone. Please, don't talk about that anymore. I'd love you. Do you, Wendell? These last few years, I... I began to wonder. I wanted the Supreme Court for you, too. Oh, I love you so much. Margaret... Yes. What you said before about it being an accident, that was, a, and 
this was. Tell me. What... I, I didn't mean to kill him. But when he started to talk about you, his, his eyes, I, I hit him. I hit him. He died so easily. Wendell? Yes. Oh, I must have fallen asleep. Where are we turning? The marshes. Oh, what if they find... It won't matter. No one knows of him and me. Oh, if you'd only told me 20 years ago, when. If I could only turn back time to just a couple of hours ago. Why are you... Beyond those trees is the water. Oh, how are you going to... I'll carry him. Oh, no. No, wait. Someone will see you. No one comes this way. I, I turn off the lights. So dark. Don't be afraid. I'll be right back. Oh, yes, please. Clouds scudding over the moon. Lose your way, mister. Oh. What'd you say? I said you lose your way. Policeman. Right, lady. What, what? What is it? What's the matter? That's my question. Now, don't tell me you ran out of gas. I, I, I don't know what you mean. Yeah. Well, let me improve your education. There's some foolish people parked here for little parties. Somebody else has been coming around here with a knife holding up the lovebirds. So I've been assigned to keep traffic moving. So get moving. Mister? Now. Of course. Margaret, don't. Please. Oh, I... Uh, I'm just tired, that's all. I'm all right, really. This past hour, I've been thinking about what you said. And it's true. Exterminated vermin, that's all. You knew him as well as I did. Every day of his life was wrong. I've made up for what I did 20 years ago a thousand times. I'll make up for this, too. Believe me, I will. Oh, I know you will. I, I guess that policeman suddenly appearing frightened me more than I realized. You all right now? Yeah, I think so. There's no reason to be frightened. No. I'll get rid of him. In Belford Woods, and that'll end it. Policeman stopping us. Oh, for God's sake, stop that. Ink is a policeman in every nook and cranny of the district. What have you been doing all these hours, sitting with your eyes closed? This is open country. There isn't anyone around for miles. All I ask is that you shut your mouth and don't talk anymore. I... I'm sorry, Margaret. I'm, I'm very sorry. What are you staring at? The red light. Red light? There's no... no I saw it. Against the sky. Was... There's nothing. Gee, what... look. There. Oh, yes, yes. What is it? Oh, tell me. Fire. Oh. Yes, it... It must be a forest fire. Oh. The woods. They must be burning. Oh. Now, Margaret, stop. You said you'd get rid of him in Belford Woods. Margaret, stop. I can't take any more. <laughs> Margaret, quiet. Someone's coming. What? Another policeman. Oh, my God. Oh. End of the line, folks. Oh. I, I don't understand. What? Around the bend, a private plane crashed about an hour ago. Step out of the brush. You have to go back to the junction and detour. Oh. Uh, come on now, lady. You're safe enough. Oh. Just head back where you came from. There's no danger. Hey, it's, it's all right. She, she's been ill. Thank you, officer. <laughs> Wendell. What? We are going back. What? To tell the police the way you wanted to. Are you out of your mind? Oh, I'm so afraid. 
I can't help it. Stop it. Stop it. You know me. You know I've got the strength. I've always had it. I've got it now. A dead man isn't going to spoil my life. I'll get rid of him. We return to our story of Vicious Circle. The hours have crawled by and the body of the blackmailer is still with Wendell Whitney and his wife. Are you asleep? No. We're almost there. Almost there. Driving along this last hour, everything's cleared up in my mind. Everything. Everyone has a secret cross to bear. I'll bear mine, and because of it, do better for for everyone. I'll have that chance soon. So it'll be all right. Strange. In a crisis, you were always stronger than I was. Just a, a little while, just long enough for me to get my bearings. And then it doesn't matter that you fall apart, because by that time, I'm all right. Almost there. I keep thinking of that day, the day it rained. I was in such a hurry, I had a crazy idea that if I was late, you might change your mind. There's something else I've never forgotten. The way it sounded when the front of the car hit her, steel on flesh. Oh, strange the sky is. Darker than dark. Well, we're here, Margaret. In, in a few moments... Get rid of him now. Please. Yes. You stay in here. Where are you going? I have to open the trunk. Oh. Uh, I'll only be a minute. Wendell, wait. What is it? I've been thinking... It was it was my fault, too. Huh? Well, if, if I hadn't failed you somehow, you, you would have told me long ago. But I failed you, so you so you kept quiet. I'm to blame. I'm not going to stand here listening to nonsense. Wendell! What? There's a light coming. What? The light. Now, shut up, it's just a boy. Hi. Excuse me. Uh, you got a jack? I got a flat a couple of miles up, and I saw your lights, and then you stopped, and... Hey, mister, am I glad to see you. W what's the matter? Something wrong? Wrong? W with your car. You know, I mean, I, I saw you get out and, and go to the back. Well, and... Nothing's wrong. Nothing at all. Oh, well, if there is, I just meant I'd be happy to help you fix it. Me, I got problems. You see, my girl and I, we came out here, and she's supposed to be home at no later than 11. I, I know it sounds corny, but I, I really did get a flat. And if you could give me the key to the trunk, I'll get the jack. No, and... I have no jack. Oh. Well, they, could you drive me back to my car and we could pick up Penny? Uh, that's my girl. She's, she is scared sitting there in the dark. And if you could drop us off at the next gas station, I could, uh, you, you know, call her folks and, and get squared away. I, I sure would appreciate you giving us a ride, mister. No. Step away from the door. Oh, mister. Come on, have a heart. We've been waiting for two hours for a car to come along. No, no, no. Go away. I, I can't. Hey, wait a minute. You're Judge Whitney. Hey, look, look, I'll hold up the light. You can see. I'm Jimmy Hayes. I'm one of the pages in the Senate. I saw you when you gave that speech. I, I don't blame you for not wanting to pick up hitchhikers way out here, but now you know who I am, Okay. Judge Whitney? All right. Get in. Row, row, row your boat gently row, down row, the stream. Row, row, row your boat gently merrily, down merrily, the stream. Merrily, 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 merrily. Don't row, get a row. flat tire. <laughs> <laughs> We're not very good, Judge, but you got to admit we sure are loud. Hey, Penny. Let's give another one of our extensive repertoire. Jimmy, I don't think they want a floor show. Sure they do. The judge is full of jokes. 
You should hear him when he talked to the Senate. Well, he sure is fresh out of jokes on this ride. They haven't said a word. He or his wife. Oh, uh, so maybe they got troubles. I'll cheer him up. Uh, Judge? Yes? Everyone was talking today about what Walter Cronkite said last Sunday about you being, um... Uh, you know, the dark horse for the court. All the pages were saying that they sure hope that you make it. Thank you. All the fellows were saying that you, Mrs. Wedney, would be the prettiest woman in Washington since Dolly Madison. Me, I said you'd be the prettiest one in history. <laughs> well, it sure is a sweet piece of machinery. Y you know, this car, uh, little foreign jobs are all right mechanically, but you give me something like this for a payload, I mean, comfortable and big enough to carry just about anything. Margaret. Y did I say something funny? Margaret. Stop it. For God's sake, stop it. Is that enough, operator? Okay. I hope it's your mother that answers. Oh, I'll say. Please, operator, just keep ringing. Oh, they're asleep, I bet. That's your dad. He's looking for a gun. She's asleep. Who? Oh, yeah, the judge's wife. It's nice of him to wait. I mean, with her not feeling well. I still can't figure it out. Why all the hysterics? Oh, she's sick, that's all. Uh, hello, mother. Yeah, I'm all right. We had a flat tire and... Hello, Dad. I know. I know. Look, please listen. We had a flat tire and... All right, all right. I'll put him on. He wants to talk to you. Uh, thanks a lot. Hello, Mr. Kraber. Yes, sir. Nothing to worry about. We're here with Judge Whitney and his wife. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <gasps> Uh, Mr. Kraber, I've got to interrupt. It's starting to rain. Penny, don't stand there. Run for the car. I'll finish with your dad. All right. Oh, wow, that's all I needed. Judge, are you sleeping too? No. Look, Jimmy's talking to my dad. He'll be along in a minute. It was nice of you to wait for us, you know, with her not feeling well. Oh, gosh, I hate thunder. Let me in, Penny. Come on, I'm getting soaked. Did you get my dad to understand? He yelled so much, I got a tin ear. Uh, Judge, her father's coming here for us. Oh, no. I told him it was just a flat, but you know him. He said to stay put, he'll break my... That's my dad. Wow, is he coming down? If you could wait just a couple of minutes longer, Judge, till the rain lets up... Well, my dad will be here real soon. Uh huh? What'd you say? Get rid of him, Wendell. Margaret, sleep. Get sleep. rid of him, Wendell. Out of the trunk. That boy. Tomorrow morning, all Washington will know that my wife was hysterical. Is it morning? What? Yes. Dawn. I hadn't realized. No need to hurry anymore. Daylight. I've got to get there before daylight. No need to hurry anymore. Margaret, please. I know where I'm going now. Yes. East Road. He's around your neck. All that happened, it doesn't matter. I know where to go. The way he's been for 20 years. What'd you say? Well... Doesn't matter. Yeah. This place will end it. Around your neck. The river. This is where I should have come in the first place. Road's always deserted. Water under the bridge is deep. Just don't go back there, Wendell. What are you talking about? Don't go back there. He'll get his hands on you. Never let you go. Drag you down. Stop it. down. He's dead. Down. Into the river and the nightmare will be over. No. Don't go there. Out of my mind. I'm trying to drive me out of mine. Keith. Yeah, so get you out of there, Henry, and it'll be over. A 20-year nightmare. Over. Lid will come open. What's the matter? 
jammed. I've got to get it open. I've got to. He's holding it, Wendy. What? Who? From the inside, holding it. I'll get rid of him for you. Huh? I'll get rid of him for you. Margaret! Get away from that wheel! Don't! Margaret, come back! Don't! Captain, any minute now. Uh, all right, speed it up as much as you can. All right. The reporters are driving me nuts. You take a look at them. His wife's dead under the river, and they haven't got the decency to. I'll put a stop to it. All right, fellas, leave the judge alone. I told you that before. Come on, take it easy, Captain. Ah. The papers are full of the judge this morning. Haven't you heard? The party's endorsed him all the way. All we want is a simple statement. The man's in a state of shock, sitting here by the road ever since... Hey, look, the plane's got the car. They're hoisting it up. He's in there, all right. Uh, judge, please, uh, won't you make a statement, please? Statement? Yeah, what happened? How did it happen? Yeah. Yeah, I'll make a statement. Yeah. It was raining. I I was driving fast. I ran over a woman. What? Old Mary Foley. But don't arrest me now. Please. I haven't time to stop now. Margaret's waiting for me at the church. You see, I'm on my way to get married. The Mutual Radio Theater is brought to you five nights a week at this time. Tonight's original radio play, Vicious Circle, was written, produced, and directed by Arch Obler. Your host was Vincent Price. Our stars were Fletcher Markle, Mary Jane Croft, and Vic Perrin. Featured in the cast were Marvin Miller, Byron Kane, Tommy Cook, Jack Crucian, Harley Bear, Carol Bilger, and Jack Carroll. The Mutual Radio Theater theme was composed by Nelson Riddle. John Harlan speaking. The Elliott Lewis production of Mutual Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI. <laughs>